Can someone please think of the children? What's good everybody, Forrest here with our review of Spynet, a sweet little card drafting game designed by Richard Garfield and published by Z-Man Games. And yes, you heard me right, that Richard Garfield, the man responsible for Magic the Gathering, Android Netrunner, King of Tokyo, and a ton of other excellent games. Therefore, the bar for Spynet is set pretty high given its design DNA. So let's hop into a quick explanation of how the game is played, and then we'll see if what Mr. Garfield's cooked up suits our palates. Spynet is a competitive card drafting game for 2 to 4 players. The average game length is around 15 to 30 minutes, and the average price as of November 2017 is around $15. First up, Spynet changes a little bit depending on the number of players. In a 2 or 3 player game, it's every man or woman for themselves. In a 4 player game, you will have 2 teams of 2. Additionally, there are some slight rule changes in a team game. We'll cover these in a minute. So Spynet is based around a single deck of cards. The deck is composed primarily of 2 different types of cards, missions and agents. Missions are your primary focus and the method by which you accumulate victory points. Each mission card is worth points equal to the number of stars shown on the card. Missions belong to one of four branches. Essentially, these are just colors, red, green, blue, and yellow. So how do you secure these missions? That's where agents come in. Agents provide the power needed to play missions. Their power level ranges from 1 to 4. Additionally, some agents have special powers that can help you or hinder your opponents. Agents, just like missions, also belong to one of four branches, or colors. So that's the key concepts. Here's how the game is played. Setup begins with taking the top three cards of the deck and placing them each into an individual pile. Each player then gets a single card. On a player's turn, they may choose either to recruit or deploy. Recruiting is how players will add new cards to their hands. To recruit, a player begins by secretly looking at all the cards in Pile 1 and either adds all of them to their hand or returns them back face down to Pile 1. If they return the cards, they will then do the same with Pile 2, inspecting it and either adding all of them to their hand or placing it back in its pile. If they pass on Pile 2, they then move on to Pile 3, again with the same choice. Pass on Pile 3 and they take a single card from the top of the deck. After adding cards to their hands, the player then will add a single card to each pile that they looked at, starting with pile 1 and including the pile whose cards were added to their hand. For instance, if a player takes pile 2, he will add one card to the top of pile 1 and another to the now empty pile 2, reseeding it. If a player passes on all piles and takes a card from the top of the deck, he would then add a card to each of the three piles. So recruiting is how you fill your hand. Now we'll move on to deploying, which is how you play cards from your hand. When a player chooses to deploy, they can do as many of the following actions as they want in any order. 1. They may play a single agent card in its associated branch. 2. They may play one mission card face down in each branch that they are currently dominating. A player is dominating a branch if their combined agent power in that branch is higher than each of their opponent's powers in said branch. A player's power does not need to exceed their teammate's power in a team game. If players are tied, then no player is dominating a branch. Again, missions are played face down and thus are kept secret from all other players, including your teammates. Also, multiple mission cards may be played in a turn, but this is restricted to a single mission card in each branch that you are currently dominating. Finally, the third option a deploying player may choose is to pass one card face down to their teammate, who then adds it to their hands. Obviously, this choice is only available in the four-player version of Spynet. So that's the basic idea of how the game is played. So when does it end? Well, when the deck runs out. As you are constantly adding cards to the recruitment piles, eventually it will be depleted, at which point each player gets a final turn to deploy, and then the game is scored. Players reveal all mission cards in play and add up the points on any missions they currently own. In a four-player game, teams combine their score. The highest score wins the game. All right, pretty simple little game. If you'd like to see what it looks like in action, we recommend you go check out our Spynet playthrough, available in a link in this video's description. Now let's move on to what we think about Spynet. 
So first off, what we like about this game. Drafting. The card drafting in SpyNet takes its mechanics directly from another one of Richard Garfield's creations in the Magic the Gathering world, and this concept is called Winston Drafting, which is a type of card drafting system used to build semi-randomized decks. Standard drafting rules don't always work the best when there's just two players in a draft, and as such, Garfield came up with the three-pile system you saw in the rules overview and called it Winston Drafting. Well, lo and behold, the man has designed an entire game around this deck building draft mechanic, and what do you know? It actually works really well. With it, you're able to deduce to some degree what branches your opponents are zoning in on in the early game when the focus is on recruitment. Towards the mid game, when the focus shifts more to deployment, the draft mechanic can take on more of a denying the other guy certain cards aspect rather than a strengthening your own hand approach. Finally, in the end game, the draft takes on a whole other aspect, wherein the game deck becomes a weapon of sorts. Do you draft more cards from the piles, thus depleting the deck and hastening the end of the game, or do you deploy more agents, possibly missing out on good cards in the piles, to try to slow things down? Doing well in this game necessitates a balanced approach between these two tactics, and the Winston draft mechanic is at the core of that enjoyable dilemma. Special Agents So as mentioned before, some of the agents have special abilities that generally allow you to screw with your opponent in various ways. You can eliminate their agents, force them to discard from their hand, or hell, even force their agents to go turncoat and flip over to your side. While the game isn't really centered on the take that concept, it does bring some amount of it in through these special agents, and they're a good element to help keep SpyNet from becoming just a numbers game. A lot of these agents work really well in a combo, wherein you can string multiple attacks along with some enrichment of your own goals. They're a nice touch, and actually add a good amount of strategic choice in the game. Situations So SpyNet includes eight different situation cards that modify some aspect of the game's rules, and they stay in effect for the entire game. Some of them make certain branches, or really just colors, turn into wild cards. For instance, one card makes all green agents be able to be played on any branch, while another adds an assassination aspect, letting you discard certain cards to kill opponent agents. Basically, it's a set of house rules included in the box, and it's great that they did this. Admittedly, some of them do work better than others, but I have to commend any publisher who has this sort of variety of their quick and cheap little card games. It goes a long way to keeping the game fresh. Okay, moving on to what we don't like. Card readability. The issue we have is not with the art in SpyNet itself, but rather with the design layout of the mission cards, and more specifically the stars which indicate their point value. They are a little hard to read in low light situations, and really could have benefited from placing a black stroke line around them to increase visibility. Additionally, the four color theming does bring to mind the question of accessibility for players with color blindness. I want to stress I'm not saying it's necessarily an issue, because I'm not colorblind and thus not entirely sure, but I have seen people with color recognition sensitivities raise concern about similar color schemes in other games. If you are colorblind or know someone who is, please by all means let us know in the comments if there are any issues with SpyNet's color scheme. Finally, what we're ambivalent about. Player count. While SpyNet is a perfectly enjoyable game at two or three players, I do think it does shine brightest at four, wherein you have the team play. One aspect of the team play is that the rules restrict you from sharing info with your teammate. You can't verbally communicate directly about your cards or strategy. As such, you're trying to signal your intentions through the cards you pass on to your teammates, and that's a fun concept that's incredibly rewarding when you line up with your teammate mentally and the strategy just clicks. Without this team play, an aspect of the game that does seem like a huge plus is removed. And while it's still a good game without it, I really do believe SpyNet is best with the team play bringing the mechanic in. Anyways, let's wrap this up. Should you spend your money on SpyNet? First off, if you have the ability to regularly play it with 4 players, then absolutely, for 15 bucks, it's a steal when it comes to the fun little card game genre. If you're normally playing with less, then yeah, I'd still take a look at it if only for the Winston drafting mechanic, which is a really cool way to handle the main mechanic of the game. It really does lead to some tense moments where you teeter back and forth between your offensive and defensive options. Richard Garfield knows what he's doing when it comes to card games, and while I'm not predicting this one's going to be a long-term classic or anything, it's got enough fun in the box to keep you playing the game without quickly getting bored. 
If it seems like your sort of thing, then yeah, give it a chance and I think you'll dig Spydet. In any case, thanks for watching our review. If you dig our style, we'd really appreciate a like or even a sub. It means a ton to us. And as always, until next time, take it easy.